Welcome back. We're nearing the home stretch. As you can see, I got some of uh, the parts I've been working on laid out here. We've been uh, refinishing a few things uh, that you saw in the last episode. Uh, for example, uh, this skid plate. You remember it was all real beat up and everything? Well, we uh, put it all back into shape, uh, smoothed it out, painted it up, and it uh, looks, looks brand new. Um, also, you may have saw we did a little repair on our carburetor cover here, which actually uh, fits right right here. And uh, if you remember, we had this big old gash and gouge in the aluminum, and you saw me fix that, and we put our uh, final finish on it. It's the close, uh, closest match to what the original finish, like if I had shine this up, it'd look close to this. And you're probably wondering, it's like, well, why didn't you do the clutch cover before you, uh, you know, put the engine back together? Well, if you remember, you know, I like to get my engines running and get everything running before I get into any of the finishing part. And part of that was it's kind of a double-edged sword. I could have finished this before, put it together, got it all started, but as you can see, over time, you know, just even the factory coat, you know, wears from your foot here, uh, sitting on the foot peg and rubbing on the case and, and you know, little scratches just from, um, you know, hitting sticks and grass and things. So it's kind of a double-edged sword. I could have done that, but I would have risked chipping the my new finish <laughs> when I was getting it running should I have needed to take it apart and do some other work. Fortunately, I didn't have to, but still, you know, you're you're moving this kick lever around and it does, it can, you know, if you're not careful, hit the case back here and it's gonna chip off, uh, possibly. Um, so, I'm gonna have to uh, mask everything off and paint it while it's on, on the machine. It's, you know, it's a little harder to do it this way, but given the circumstances, this is the best alternative uh, to doing it. Also, with this type of engine, the engine, outer engine covers, like our ignition cover, and there's a clutch cover too that uh, you need to get to. Carburetor cover and clutch cover are are painted, as you can, as evidenced right here. And there was some uh, wear on the carburetor cover right here where your boot would uh, rub. But the center cases and the cylinder are just supposed to be left natural aluminum and not really even a high polish. Uh, different bikes, you know, have a different finish on them. Some of everything's polished, uh, but this one, for a factory correct look, it just needs to be a kind of a matte uh, looking uh, natural aluminum. So what I'm going to do now, and that's why I have some other stuff laid out, is I'm going to show you what I'm going to have to do in this particular engine. Your project may be slightly different, but you can use the techniques used here. As you can see, we also have some other parts laid out here. Um, some, uh, they were in good enough shape, they were just a little bit uh, dirty and uh, shined uh, up the uh, chrome bolts and things. These are, these are for the forks and, uh, and top clamp. Also the top clamp here, you may look and you may say, you know, how come it's a matte black? Didn't you forget to, didn't you forget to put the clear on or use a gloss? No, the factory coat on the top clamp is actually a matte finish. So I have a good thick coat of matte and then a matte black and also I put, and on all of these I put a good four coats of a protective clear. Obviously on these covers and this I'll use a gloss but this was a, a, a matte coat and that's just for protection. This is similar to how the factory would have would have done it. Also have some little brackets here, these go to the frame. Frame is gloss so we use gloss there. Um, interesting. The uh, foot peg mounts here do not get painted. They stay a natural steel color. Um, I'm going to use a product uh, that will protect them from uh, eventually rusting. I mean, these are a cast part, so um, they're actually an alloy. They're not exactly steel or cast iron. They're kind of a cast aluminum, but there is must be some steel in there because they did have a slight amount of rust. Also, we. Uh, went and grabbed ourselves, uh, there was some new old stock uh, foot peg rubbers uh, and replaced those so the rubbers are going to look, uh, rubber parts are going to look uh, brand new and uh, 
here we are. We're ready to, uh, you know, get to polishing the cases, and and then we're ready to once the frame is completely done and dry, which I have it drying. Uh, we can put this back. To, we can start putting all these little detail parts. And of course, there's more parts than just this. Uh, I just took a good sampling. It shows you some of the different finishes uh, that we have to do. Getting down to uh, actual polishing, there's a couple things you can do. I'm going to use, um, you know, buffing wheel, wheel, cotton buffing wheel. There's uh, different ones you can get. Uh, they go on different types of tools. This is probably going to work for what I'm going to do. Uh, you can buy these kits at most tool stores, uh, auto parts stores and things. And you can get them online anywhere. Uh, for the home shop, these are going to work just fine. There's what are called buff bobs. They, you know, maybe cone shape or ball shape. They'll be for getting into different areas. Uh, also, you need some different compounds. Uh, this jeweler's ruse generally for gold, silver, and such. More finer finish. This is for more of a heavier cut. Uh, there's even heavier cuts than just these. Depends on how much corrosion you have. This aluminum is in pretty good shape. It's just a little bit of scale on it, so so this will probably be good enough. Plus, uh, I don't I probably won't use this because I don't want a high gloss shine. I want more of a matte finish. Best I can tell from the the uh, factory brochures that are actually in color. Because most actually most things for this bike are uh, in black and white. Uh, show uh, painted, uh, somewhat metallic aluminum color side cases with with a matte finish on the raw aluminum. Also, uh, there's this product out here. There's different metal polishes. Uh, this one's uh, is from Eagle One. It's called Never Dull. Uh, it's just a wadding. You just rip off what you want, rub on there. This will be my last step to just kind of take off any residue from the buffing and then to, this will also leave a good protective coating on there to keep uh, the scale and uh, oxidation from you know, occurring too rapidly. Because this bike, as I said in the beginning, you know, I'm really doing this to be as factory accurate as possible. Uh, in the confines of a home shop. So, you know, this is going to be more of a show bike for me. You know, I'll ride it probably a little bit, but, uh, you know, I'm not going to really put it through at paces. I, you've seen in the background, I have two other bikes here, and that's going to be a future project that uh, you'll see from me in the future, a future video series where I'm going to make uh, one of these bikes and do some modifications to. And that's where, you know, using products like this, um, will help keep you know something you're using every day in uh, in good looking order so all right so to get to it here I mean it's pretty easy chuck up your uh, buffing uh, wheel you're gonna on a rotary tool you're gonna rotate it and press some of the uh, compound on there and then just get to polishing and uh, go into it and uh, with a lot of elbow grease and a lot of time be patient with this process because um, it's going to take a while it ain't going to just happen overnight where well, you go after a couple hours of work a lot of uh, elbow grease and cramped fingers um, as you can see Looks all nice and shiny, nice matte finish here. So we're ready to uh, start taping this off and uh, roughing this up so we can uh, paint up this clutch cover. And then we're about ready to uh, call this engine done and ready to start putting everything back in the frame. Well, all right. Uh, it's been a while since we've seen the frame here. Uh, I did a little bit of painting on this and um, a little word about how I painted this. Now I used an, uh, an acrylic enamel, um, an automotive gray, not, and uh, that's because that's what uh, would have came from the factory. Now some people would say, well, why don't you just powder coat the frame? Um, now I could have done that. The thing is, is there's a lot of little uh, accessory pieces that uh, would be hard to, sometimes powder coating, you know, black isn't black. 
all the way around. And when you got small pieces that you might want to just uh, spray paint out of convenience, or it just maybe isn't practical to uh, powder coat, you know, you can get a good finish, good hard finish, um, by doing uh, proper prep and using the proper paints. And that's what I did here. And then I cleared it with a urethane clear, uh, automotive grade, and uh, put four coats on this thing. So it's got a real tough finish uh, on here. And like I said, given this is just a, a show bike, you know, where your boot wears here, uh, no little more than I'm gonna ride it, you know, I'm not gonna be riding it. It's not gonna be a daily driver for me. Uh, this is going to wear just as long as the factory coat did. But as you can see, I got some of my parts here. We see the forks again here. And uh, I'm about ready to put some of this stuff on. Now, you're probably wondering about the wheels. I still gotta shine those up like I showed you doing the engine. Just a lot of elbow grease and uh, put some new tires on. And uh, you'll see those back a little later. I have the swing arm done here. You just, I just don't have it in the shot. But uh, we're ready to really start putting some of this back together. We still got a few other little details to refinish uh, as well. Uh, probably going to need to replace some fasteners that are just kind of damaged. You know, I want this to look uh, you know, brand new. So we're going to have to head to the hardware store and uh, get some of them are chrome. Uh, some of them are just natural. Uh, and we're going to replace all the engine case bolts and everything, which I haven't done yet. Uh, to, but that will be one of the last steps. But I just wanted to show you. I've got the frame. i got the wiring harness put back in, how it's supposed to be. Um, cleaned up the wires. And I uh, still got to put the battery box in. So then I can route the wires where they're exactly supposed to be. Put the CDI box on. And, uh, and then before I put the engine in, we're going to tape all these places in the frame so when I'm manhandling the engine in, if I happen to bump it, I'm bumping the tape and not not my uh, not my frame risk uh, chipping it. But I just painted this. It's only been a couple hours. I'm going to let this set for 24 to 48 hours before I actually start handling any more parts in here to make sure this clear is completely dry and completely hard. It's one thing people uh, get in a rush you know, I can, I can touch it, it's not hurting it, but uh, it's not completely cured or not completely hard, hardened. Um, and that's real important uh, with a uh, finish that you want to get a real hard finish on. But as you can see, looks real good. And we're, like I said again, we're nearing the home stretch. So uh, keep watching. Three, two, one. Welcome back, guys. Ah. Three, two, one. Welcome back. We're nearing the home stretch. As you can see, I got some of uh, the parts I've been working on laid out here. We've been uh, refinishing a few things uh, that you saw in the last episode.